Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another low level learning tutorial. Um, in today's tutorial by popular demand, we're gonna be talking about ARM 64-bit loops and subroutines or more popularly called function calls. Before we get into that, first of all, I wanna just thank you guys for all subscribing so much. Um, we've gotten the channel to over a hundred subscribers. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, do me a favor, hit the sub button. I put out content like this every week or so. We get into really cool topics at the low level like assembly, C programming, stuff like that. Um, anyway, so let's dive right into it. The code here on the left is from my ARM 64-bit Hello World tutorial, the my big video. Um, if you haven't already seen that, get out of here, go watch that, get real familiar with that code, and then come back and watch this. If you try to watch this now without knowing that base knowledge, all these instructions like register assignment and stuff are gonna make probably no sense to you. It's gonna get way out of control real fast. So go watch that, then come back. For those of you that have seen it, we're gonna get into loops right now. Looping is this thing in assembly that we do where we use a jump instruction to make the same code happen over and over again. Um, to do a loop, we need to do three separate things. We need to have a loop created by setting up some kind of counter. We need to then run the code the loop contains. We need to try to do some kind of functionality. Um, and then finally, we need to check to make sure that the loop doesn't need to end. And if the loop needs to end, we need to end it. So let's get into that right now by writing some code. So step one, we're gonna set up our loop counter. Uh, and the loop counter we're gonna use is gonna be held in register X15. Um, X15 is a volatile register, so we can just put data in there, no issue. Uh, and we're gonna set it to 15 because you know it's called X15, so why not? Um, so now that we have our counter set up, we're gonna actually create the label, which is just an address that represents where our loop begins, right? We don't wanna set x15 every time because then the loop would never end, right? So we have this loop um, and now we need to check, is it time to end our loop? And how do we do that? Well, we need to compare our counter to some value. And in this case, we're gonna call it zero, right? If x15, if x15 has gotten to zero, if we've done our loop 15 times, it's time to end. Uh, and what do we do if that comparison is true? Well, the way that we check to see if it has actually gotten to zero is run an instruction called branch eq or branch equal. And that means that if the output of the previous instruction, so this comparison, if x15 is equal to zero, we do something. We're gonna branch in this case to a label called exit. And where we're gonna put exit is right here. And this is our old code from the previous tutorial that did the exit system call, right? So if our counter has become zero, right? We compare x15 to zero, and if they're the same, we need to exit. That means that we're done. Our loop has ran 15 times, and we're done with the program. If it hasn't been ran 15 times, this branch will not happen, right? It's very important. This doesn't always execute. It's a conditional operation. If they're not the same, we will keep running, and we will run through this code that outputs hello world from our previous tutorial, right? And that's what we want to happen. That's our functional part, or the second part of the loop. So once that's ran, we need to somehow get back into our loop and make sure that it's done in a sane way. And by sane, I mean we need to decrement the counter, right? And the way we do that is with the subtract instruction. So we're gonna say sub x15, x15, one. And what this reads to in human verbiage is that subtract one from x15 and put it into x15, right? So that means we've decremented our counter by the value of one, pretty straightforward. And then once that has happened, we need to go somewhere, right? We don't wanna keep, we don't wanna leave this on its own because this instruction will get ran and it'll just fall through to the exit code and it's like we didn't even do a loop. We need to do a B for branch and this branch happens every time. It's a branch always back to loop. So what did we write? Create a counter called x15 and make its value 15. At every iteration of the loop, compare it to zero. If zero and x15 are the same, which means our loop is done, we exit. Otherwise, we're gonna do some code, and in this case, that code writes hello world, and then once that's completed, subtract one from the counter and start all over by going back to loop. Cool. So let's compile that code. Remember, if you saw my previous tutorial, the way we compile this uh, assembly is we first use the assembler to assemble the, the assembly into an object file that should yield no errors, good. And then we invoke GCC to 
output an elf using that object file, and we have to say no standard lib to not include glibc and make it a static binary to ignore possible linker errors, right? Cool, no errors. And now we can run our program and we get 15 iterations of hello world. And just to prove that I'm not blowing smoke, we're gonna change this counter to, I'll just call it six for fun. Assemble, GCC, elf, and we get six iterations, right? Awesome. So that kind of handles the loop part of this tutorial. But what I wanted to get into too was functions. And what is the difference between a branch or a jump as they're called in other architectures um, and a function? A function call is basically just a branch where the instruction of the next, where the address of the next instruction is preserved, right? Um, so what we can actually do to kind of test this functionality is we're going to take the code that cleans up the loop and we're going to put it up here and we're going to call this little blob hello world, right? So this little hello world, we're going to treat this as a function. So instead of putting it here in the middle, we're going to have it be put somewhere else. And the way we're going to call it is by doing the arm instruction called a branch and link. And we'll talk about that in a second. So branch and link is this operation in arm 64, where not only do we transfer code execution to this label, we preserve in L, the link register, the address of the next instruction, right? So that once this code has gotten done running, it knows where to go next. So let's look at our loop again. We set up a counter, set it to six. If the loop needs to exit, we exit. Otherwise, we do a function call. So let's then go into this function call and we do some stuff. The question then is, how do we go from the function back to control to the user? And the way we do that is with the ret or return instruction in ARM64. The ret instruction, uh, pretty simply, is what's going on is the processor is saying, put the value of the link register, which is set during this branch and link instruction to PC. So then PC will end up actually running at this instruction. It gives code control back to whoever called that function, right? So we do our call, the call comes back, we subtract one from 15 and put it back into 15, and then we loop all over again. So now we're treating hello world, instead of this blob in the middle of the code, we're treating it more as a function, right? So let's clean this up, uh, assemble, compile, and run our code, and we get the same functionality, right? Um, the blob that does the actual system call is treated as a function instead of a blob that just lives in the middle of the code. There is a little more fanciness that you can do with a function call to set up this thing called a stack frame. And a stack frame is an area on the stack that contains memory for local variables. But we're not gonna get into that today. That's really complicated. And we need to kind of draw some pictures for that. Um, anyway, I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, do me a favor, drop a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Keep on learning. Have a good night. Bye-bye.